which he was in. So, Joey, how might this impact the case uh, against him? Because he is looking at uh, charges as it relates to uh, this uh, man's death. At the same time, Mr. Bates is being allowed to vacation in the Bahamas while this case uh, continues. He got permission from the judge in which to carry on with a, va with a trip to the Bahamas while this investigation uh, continues and while he is now facing uh, time in trial uh, to defend his case. So how sure. is all of this, you know, kind of impacting the case? Frederica, let's address it in four different parts. Let's first start what you talked about, which is the vacation. Now, let's put this in perspective. I represented a law enforcement officer in New York last year, and his father died out of, out of the country. He was not permitted, based upon him facing charges, to leave to go to his father's funeral. So here we're talking about someone who was permitted to go to vacation. Should people be outraged? Well, they should be. Because based upon my experience as a prosecutor and a defense attorney, I haven't seen that. And for people to have confidence in the system, they have to feel that the system applies to everyone. Hmm. Step two, regarding inadequate training. Obviously, it's important, it's relevant. What training did he receive? When did he receive it? And if anybody forced, coerced, or otherwise pressured someone to change anything, if that happened, then there should be consequences for the people who had that happen. Step three, in the event that he had proper training, but there apparently are complaints about his performance, that also affects the case because someone who could be properly trained can still be not competent to be out there. So that's relevant. Final step. Let's say, Frederica, that he's found to have all the training imaginable, that he couldn't have had any more training than he had. It still does not address the underlying issue of how you mistake a taser for, or a gun for a taser, one being on your chest and one being on, at your sidearm. And so still, if he had all the training in the world, we have to still examine and say, mm -hmm. you can still okay. be culpably negligent. That is yeah. so careless in regard to the standards that you use that no reasonable person under your circumstances would exercise that care and still criminally responsible. So even if he did have the training, but he acted negligently, that doesn't bode well for his criminal case, and it certainly doesn't bode well for the civil case. So in conclusion, training, very important, very relevant, very significant, but even if he had the training, you still have to be held to a standard of reasonable care right. when you're dealing with people's lives. So then I wonder, Cheryl, where do you